in the viewfinder. Oh, that is sweet. It looks like the sun, doesn't it? It does. Wow, there's a lot of snow up here. Just when we get done traversing one snow field, we got another. Yeah. <laughs> Not short ones either, like this. By the way, this is a great frying pan hill for Crockett. <laughs> Dude, if I were you, I would start up at the top of the ridge there, wax your frying pan, come, come ripping down that, catch air off that hill. Right down there. You got a good There's, run out right here. There's your still picture of in the air, <laughs> legs back. Polka dotted <laughs> boxers. Oh my goodness, that's funny. Glacier Call Part 6. Crockett and I made it a point to eat before we started this hike up. And it's kind of a stress reliever, isn't it? It is. It's, I, I've noticed a big difference too on the way up. To have the food in you? Yeah, the energy level. Yeah, exactly. And all we'll have to do is snack up if that tonight. Kind of a long, long hike in, isn't it? It is. It is. With the snow, it seems even longer. Mm -hmm. Sure, it's pretty. It is. It's gorgeous up here. Aspens haven't even leafed up up here. Yeah, we're talking. What, Not mid, even buds. Mid June. Yep. And this isn't going away anytime soon. It's going to be a sloppy mess when this melts too. I don't think the mountain bikers will be up here anytime soon. No. Nope. And I have a little bit of bad news. To get where we need to go, we got to go up that little mountain right there. Uh huh. I thought a fart was coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm working on it. It's on the agenda. Oh man, I hate to be caught out here unprepared and have to spend the night. Totally. Yeah, you could survive. I mean, like right here, yeah. there's a perfect natural shelter. Break off those limbs, just cover them on top of you. You are not going to be comfortable. No. No, that'll be a long, sleepless night. You could, you could do it. Yeah. I would not. I wouldn't want to. Yep. Just a little bit of preparation pays off huge. Mm -hmm. Knife, way to make a fire. Signaling devices. In your case, extra boxer shorts. World of difference. You know, for me, a knife and fire capabilities would be huge. Yep. Those two things right there. And a way to order pizza. Domino's would be good. Sat phone. Yep. Snowmobile. I'd get barbecue chicken. Mmm. Boy, that rocked in Sub-Zero, didn't it? Yeah, it did. That was good. That was good. Oh crap, we gotta go up that. Let's get to it. There's actually a different way. There's a saddleback trail that goes back and forth. And we're just gonna go this route. I like hearing those birds. I do too. thing Crockett is you can kick some easy stairs in this. Yeah, yeah the snow's soft enough. Gives you that nice toe hold. You gotta fight those branches too. Remember that part where I was saying you could kick some easy stairs in it? <laughs> yeah. I take it back. <laughs> You'll have to let me wear them on the way home just so I can see how good they are. Awesome. Starting to cool off too. Feel that cool, cool temperature coming off the snow banks. Being out of the sun, especially when you stop moving. It's not bad, not yet.
<laughs> I almost fell on my face. See where that sun's poking out on that far face? That's the basin of the lake, I think. Almost there. We made it, Crockett. Uh, are you gonna be the first to go ice skating? After you, sir. Sure enough, that thing is mostly frozen over, ain't it? You wanna jump in there and show us how to survive hypothermia? Yeah. <laughs> have a camera crew standing by to rescue me. <laughs> Which I think is a good idea, actually. Yeah. <laughs> if I recollect correctly, there's some great camping sites over here. Actually, with this snowpack, we can camp anywhere we want and get a pretty good tent site out of it, I think. Yeah. Since it's so compacted. It was going when I handed yeah. it to you. orange afternoon sun on the far slope. On the upper knife ridge there, that's actually reddish shale. Last time I was up there. Real pretty. We'll scope out a uh, wind sheltered area. That sounds good. We've been lucky with no wind so far tonight. Yeah, it hasn't been too bad. It's, it's been, been nice. nice. But if it kicks up, which it often does, as you know up here, mm -hmm. we could get owned if we threw it right here. I could see your little bivy sack breaking loose. <laughs> <laughs> I'd find you down here that's, somewhere. That's a homemade down by sled. The lake. <laughs> Crockett. <laughs> what color is it? I'm just asking so I know what color to come looking for in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I might blend in too much. <laughs> I might be lost. I am so glad this snow is compacted. Oh. We would have bailed on this hike had we been post holing big time. Oh, that would have been miserable. Yeah. On the way, all the way up here with that snow. This is going to be home base for us. We'll put the fire pit right around here. Crockett will pitch his bivy there. Uh, I'm planning on putting a tent right around here. I'll traipse down the snow as level as I can. We're staying far enough away from the lake with our fire. Don't want any of the charcoal to be going in there. I think it's like 200 feet or something. We're well beyond that. Look at that view too. In the morning, that's gonna be glorious when the sun comes up. And then I'll launch a search for uh, Crockett and his bivy as he slid down the slope. Our game plan, by the way, is to make a fire with a small knife, nothing more. We still up for that, Crockett? Yes, I'm game. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. No big knife, no saw. We're gonna use a Mora. Bushcrafter, and I got a Mora. I'll have to look at the model number. Oh, you got mine too, cool. So that's the knives we're gonna be kind of playing around with tonight, no promises. Bushcrafter on the left, and this is a Mora. Craftline Top Q. They have so many different names, they're hard to keep track of. I like the clear sheath on that one. High value knife, super lightweight, easy to carry. I have used them before and I noticed the edges rolled on them rather easily against wood. But they have different, very, uh, different steels that they use too. We'll try them out, see how it works. We have a couple things going for us. One, no precipitation. Yeah. No wind. That's gonna help. Uh, a couple things not going for us. It's getting dark, it's getting colder, and we're tired after the long hike in. Mm -hmm. 
So again, it always comes down to how many, how much time do you have, and how many calories do you have yep. to complete the task. I can't speak to complete the task. And we still got to do shelter and get that up and going. And, and like a dummy, I'm still wearing my pack. <laughs> I don't even know why. Time to drop it. Actually, I do know why. Nice, nice push. Because filming takes priority. To be honest, kind of a pain in the butt, really. It is. The worth it. On that editing floor. Totally worth it. Yeah. It's a lot darker than it looks with this camera. We probably got about a half hour till, t you know, really dark conditions. What do you plan on doing with those? Well, I was going to make them as my bedding underneath, but they don't look that thick. I just, I don't want to, I'd rather not cut down any life stuff. Yeah, in this area, it's yeah. kind of a high use area. Yeah. But if I can take this, it's dead anyway. Yeah, that peeled off from the storm, didn't it? Yeah, it's, it sheared off right there. You know it's going to be hard about this fire, though, mm. with the little knives? One, you're building it on... I was going to say the base. The base, yeah. yeah. You have seven feet of snow you're building it on. Yeah. So you're going to have to break some big limbs to base out on. Yeah. If you want, we can cheat, and I can make you a base with a saw. Well, let's try it without. All right. In fact, if I get enough of these, maybe... How are you going to break that? That's relatively live because it was uh, broke this season. Um, Do you have like a little pocket saw or something? No. Aren't we putting the only limitation is the knife, right? Is the knife. You can uh, baton with that little blade through it though. It's going to take you a while. I could baton. I'm and... talking like a woodchuck style of thing, just chipping away at it with mm -hmm. a uh, baton. Doable. Takes forever. I like, if you can't. If you can bend these, oh, I totally zoomed. And it still works. Do you have work gloves, by the way? I do. Yeah. Cool. I don't want your hands to get ripped. Sometimes, if you, especially even if you got a seven-inch blade, that's nice because if you bend them, just give it a good whack. Boy, they split right off. Yeah. Guess what? You don't have a seven-inch blade. You have a Mora. Yeah. That's what you're working with today. This, we, this we is going to be fun. Especially gonna, in this condition. It's going to kind of suck, I think. Yeah, yeah. Because we got the really good woods tools right in our backpack. But we'll see how it works. Yeah. And we'll learn in the process either... Uh. <laughs> that sounded bloody. <laughs> That's dinner. <laughs> what? Sick. <laughs> I think I'm going to leave you alone in your fire crafting duties. You nasty baby. <laughs> we'll either confirm or deny... The awesomeness of the small blade out here. Right here, right now. All right, we got a lot to do. Yeah. Tell me when you're going to do it so I can film you, though, when you start doing the firecraft crap. Okay. I'm going to start pitching tent. Yeah, I'm going to try and work on the shelter. Now. Get the shelter built. Look at that moon coming off on that ridge there, Crockett. That is something else. That's kind of going fast, too. Yeah, it is. Wow, that is gorgeous. That is the coolest shot ever. Hmm. That tree silhouetted in it. Yeah. It looks like the sun, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> That is gorgeous. That robin is pissed. <laughs> that is just amazing, isn't it? It is. That moonrise over the ridge. Wow. We are just awestruck by the moonrise over the ridge there. We've been watching it for the last five minutes. By the way, Crockett and myself pretty much have that in common appreciation for the beauty that we are lucky enough to see out here. Mm -hmm. It's totally genuine. We're uh, pretty much just both born that way. And that's kind of what has to happen. I've brought a lot of people in places like this, you know, youth groups, different friends over the years. Some people can look at that and they go, ah, whatever, what's for dinner? Yeah, yeah. They just go, they just blow right past it like it's nothing. 
What's that saying? You can't see the forest through the trees? Yeah. Yeah, I've got friends that, I mean, they enjoy coming out, but they don't, the details and the, the little things like that, they just don't take the time. No. It's like a surreal landscape. Yeah, it is. And just to watch that rise, I mean, just, just crest right over that top. Yeah, we saw it from start to finish. <laughs> By the way, we are slowly setting up camp. How's that energy level, buddy? It's not bad. Uh -huh. Now that we just kind of took a little rest, but I'll be honest, I don't have a lot in me. Yeah. And again, like we've said a thousand times in TMP, uh, we hike in, you know, it's not a backyard adventure out here, obviously. Yeah. Um, and so we arrive at location pretty much uh, butts kicked, usually. Still a lot of tasks to do, like fire making and stuff. And then we're uh, figuring out Crockett's bivouac situation. That was going to be his bedding for the night. We had a discussion about how <laughs> this slope up here, all that cold is going to come down and just sink right here. Mm. I got that natural dam too right there. Dam. Yep. Uh, we were really lamenting the fact we left a snow shovel. Yeah. Really, really, really lamenting that fact. Time and calories probably tonight prevent the construction of such shovel. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that's a cool shot. You look like an alien, dude. <laughs> when you see this in post pro, you're gonna freak. God, that looks so cool. Hmm. If for no other reason, this whole trip is worth it for the shot Just I'm getting one. right now. Yeah. The only way it'd be better is if I could get you out of it. <laughs> Some looks to kind of drown out the background, though. Yeah. You might want to edit that out. You're like upstaging the moon right now. <laughs> downstage, Crockett. Downstage. <laughs> I'll try to be uglier. Be less awesome. <laughs> I know a really quick way you could be less awesome. How's that? Pop out one of them wet farts you've been laying down. <laughs> I dropped a big bomber. Dudes, <laughs> off camera? <laughs> Honestly, I was I was worried for his safety. It's going to keep me warm tonight. I thought some intestine came out. I'm thinking level two. Screw that. I need a level three and a helo. I need a dust off ASAP. All right. We also talked about uh, Crockett making a teepee out of his tarp, and it looks like that's what he's going for. Do a little A-frame, maybe. We could cut some. Uh, I'll be honest. When some I, limbs out and do it proper, like. But again, time and calories. Yeah. When I thought about doing this, I was thinking patches of snow, not on snow. But. Uh, I admit there is more snow up here than I thought there would be. Yeah. I thought that we'd have huge patches in open ground. We are in solid six to eight feet of snow up here everywhere um, really compacted by the warmth that uh, the days are given now at this elevation about 9500 feet elevation is where we're at maybe a little bit lower I didn't check recently these guys are gonna spank you for those stakes that you've done <laughs> now I'm not done yet <laughs> I'm getting there wow <laughs> You definitely win the farting award so far. <laughs> Remember how I said I, I was glad there was no wind? I take that back too. <laughs> and I wish the wind went from here to there. A stiff breeze. Situated. We are looking at the Crockett A-frame in progress. He's gonna put his bivy sack in there. Are you just putting it right, right on the snow uh, on your pad? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm gonna put the, the pad will be in the pack, in the bivy. Okay. And that way it won't slide around. I like that be set up better than you were gonna do in those, I don't know, tree boughs over there. <clears throat> Setting up the clip flashlight too tonight. Didn't really throw the rain fly on. I'll probably do a separate review on this sometime. Love this little tent. I was kind of worried I didn't bring my snow stakes, but this snowpack we're on is so dense, 
so far, subject to change, it seems like those MSR Y stakes are holding pretty tight. See how dry this is? Mm -hmm. It's not bad. That'd be good tender right there. Yeah. We can strip some of that off, carry it back, and then we need a mid size. Yeah. If you take care of this, I want to go fetch some mid sized um, branches and I'll bring those back. Okay. So I'll work on these little get yeah. tender pencil size. Pencil size, a little bit of crushed toothpick size like that. Cool. We'll see if it'll take fire. If you see any sap dripping too, or any impregnated limbs with sap, we'll use that. All right, TMPers, again, what we're trying to do is make the fire with just our very small knives. Here's a standing small tree, totally dead. Let's wrench that down. Luckily, we don't have any snow up in those boughs. Get us wet. Gator's paying off again. Oh, I really want to saw this down. I like this one though because it's uh, been standing vertical and it's really dry. It's going to burn well. I got to stow the camera for this work. Whew. Got it. A lot of energy to break that. Oh, dude. Just fell in that hole again. That was super smart. Let's see, we got a beacon on the tent over here. There it is. Just wanted to show you that on camera. I'm not lost. A prion two beacon running. That looks like some good natural tinder to me. Check this out. Pine cones shucked by squirrels and such. Dry too, since it hasn't been raining or snowing. We'll give it a try, see if it works. That sound sounds pretty good too, for dryness. Seems pretty dry. I need some good mid sized branches like that. But eventually, we're gonna have to get into the big wood. We want our fire to be durable. Ugh. It's hard filming, <laughs> busting this stuff. Well, some guys will say this is the easy way to start a fire, but I don't seem to be saving a lot of calories. Really tempted to break out the Buck Hoodlum and the Sawviver. Uh, there's good. Candidate right there. It's a dead quakey. Uh, not exactly vertical, close enough. I'll see if I can pull that one out. Drag those back to camp. Process them with our little knives. Maybe. Well, off camera, I was wrenching that thing pretty hard. It is not rotten and it's in there. Without hurting myself, I don't think I can get that one. Bummer. Keep you in mind though, in case I come back with a saw. How about this one right here? All right, even this little fella is laughing at me. So how about we notch it a little bit? Get it started. I zoomed in on that, yep.
yeah. Who's laughing now? How are you faring, Crockett? Uh, it can be done, but I'll tell you, with a saw, it's so much less work. Yeah. And a big knife to shear the small limbs off and stuff. Uh huh. Yeah, just to sit there. Ch -ch -ch. Yeah. This pile of wood took me about 15 minutes to score. And even this little thing was giving me fits. I had to notch it with the mora mm. to break it because it's not rotten. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll grab this bundle right here. I'm kind of concerned about our base, you know? Yeah. yeah. Breaking big enough pieces for that. Oh, you know, I did get a, a kind of some big pieces of bark. Uh, we can try that. I hope they're not too damp. Okay. That fire burns through stuff, though. We need some big old logs. Mm. Otherwise, it's going to be China syndrome to the to the ground. Stuff. Another thing that I I don't really dig is that I know there's moisture in this bark here. Mm. It's been... Yeah, it is. I mean, you can navigate by that huge moon. Yeah. But to make it sustaining to Crockett, we need to find and process pieces bigger than that. Yeah. We'll go through this stuff in 20 minutes. Yeah, it'll burn quick. 11? Dude, it's 11 o'clock already. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's plan this out. Um, we absolutely have to have a good platform. Um, this fire will not work on this eight feet of snow. Yeah. It just will not. The, no, we could do is crowd ourselves under the base of that tree where there's some dirt, but I'm not really up for getting all sappy and we, we don't want to shear those limbs off anyhow to make room for us. Hmm. In a survival situation though, I would do that. That's a whole different ball game. Yeah, we're not doing that. And I'd only do it if there wasn't tons of snow that would melt down and extinguish the fire. Back to the base. One way we could make it without using the saw is we'd find a limb about yay big that takes searching, it takes calories, it takes time. And then uh, it can't be like really strong because we need to take it and bust it upside a tree. If we could bust it into lengths like that, then we could press that into the snow. Okay, and we'll need a good four of those, maybe five for a good plank that will withstand the heat and flames of the fire for the night as it melts down. Mm. That bark will be a good way to start it, but it will not last. Yep. What's going to happen is it's going to be a puddle, and then uh, the fire's going to go out as that water melts on top of the snow. Remember, we're on a uh, big snowpack, guys. Eight feet of snow. We really weren't counting on it, were we? No, not at all. Um, and like you said off camera, if we didn't have the snow, we're in business. I oh, mean, yeah, that's a whole different story with this pile of wood that's... Yeah. There it goes. Um, we got to get some more size fuel logs about yay big and I would like to see some about yay big with no stru uh, bark, wet bark on the outside of it, maybe vertical standing but honestly I don't know if we can follow them without the saw. So as late as it is we need to make a decision, weigh in if there's anything you have an idea on. Um, we could cheat, use a saw, make the base. That way we have a base and then for fuel we do all that manually with a small knife. Um, alternately we have to go searching for that log and and in, uh, in this basin and that might take a little bit. We, we can do it, but it may take up to, I don't know, half hour. Yeah. And this kind of illustrates bringing the right tools with you. Um, yeah. You know, even on day hikes, I bring a saw with me. Some some guys, you know, think it's way too much, but... It weighs, what, 10 ounces? Yeah. And if you get out in a situation, hey, you're ready for it. And even if you don't bring a big saw, like you've seen thousands of times, well, not thousands, but lots here in TNP, Bring a big survival knife, survival knife, even a medium size like the Rat 7. Mm. Um, and then you're in business with that because you have more options. Right now, um, actually I will say that with this Mora Top Q, it did pretty good notching that little, that little tree that I just brought over. I just notched it and the blade hasn't rolled yet. Doable. On that particular wood, it worked pretty good actually. Took, took more time. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that whole conversation then? I'm kind of leaning towards a saw. 
I am too, and, to be honest. And that's just because it's 11 o'clock. Yeah, it's not 7 p.m. It's yeah. 11. Yeah. Long hike in. And I'll tell you, my calories are down. My brain isn't functioning as as well as it was when we first started, and I'm tired. Really? I picked up on it wasn't functioning, like, totally normally within, like, the first mile of the hike. <laughs> All right, let's do that. We're going to break out the saw viber. We'll make the platform. Fuel will stick to the small knives for now, subject to change. All right. Look at that mamma jamma right there. We fall and process that. We got wood for tonight and into tomorrow. Yes. Plus the base. Go ahead and fall that with your mora. <laughs> you want to try? No. I'm going to try. You can try it? All right. There is one caveat though, hmm. and it is time. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you how I would attack it though. Just woodchuck it, you know. Can you imagine how long this would take me though? It's like prison, breaking out of prison. <laughs> Just piece by piece. Yeah, if you got enough time, you got that little, that, that what is it, the fossil hammer they had in, what was it? Uh, was it Shawshank? Shawshank. Yeah. You got time, it can be done. Of course, some guys will say, well, that's ridiculous to fall something that big. Mm -hmm. All right. But again, we need some big planks for that, that snow. Yeah platform guys so we're not really planning on following this tonight we're just showing the process i would actually agree with that that i would go for something smaller maybe something half this diameter right, right. don't you think crockett yeah it is an interesting exercise though isn't it yeah it's interesting to explore and think about i mean yeah that that's a small blade it obviously go for something smaller and again the conditions we're in had they been different we're in business already there's another reason I'm doing this, and that is to test this blade. I want to see if that edge is going to be durable, retaining sharpness. And this is a great wilderness test for it. All right, so that's the process right there. Notching out. You, know, you can go around the circumference of whatever limb you choose or standing dead wood. Doable. Where's your saw? Right here. Wow. <laughs> There's something wrong with it. Here, come up upstream, dude. I think you're in the fall oh. line. This, this thing's going to be a mother to haul back. Look, I think I want to cut it up here. Oh, your blade is nice and sharp, dude. Choke and fall. What do you think would happen if we got seriously injured tonight? Oh, if you got seriously injured, you'd probably have to make it through the night because there's no way we could get out. What I'd do is I'd hike that uh, spot messenger to the open part of the basin. Boom. Send a message yep. that we need... Emergency service here, but I bet you they would not get here before morning. No, they wouldn't. They're not they going wouldn't. to send a helo on that, I don't mm -hmm. think. Especially when they cross check and go, this is nothing fancy. <laughs> we'll leave at 10 a.m., guys. <laughs> get the mules ready. <laughs> <laughs> but, boss, don't you want to take the helo up there? No. It's too expensive. It's Have too you seen gas. the price of g gas lately? <laughs> Add gas? <coughs> Well, my point bringing that up is we do our best staying unhurt up here. You know, it doesn't take much, too. I don't want to sound paranoid. It doesn't. But you just got to think about it. and Your pink, soft body can get crushed, cut, broken. You have a knee go out.
I'm thinking the fall line's down here, aren't you? Yeah. Right there? Yeah. Go ahead and push on it too if you can. Just give it, didn't have to be much of a push. And watch, make sure this backside back side doesn't kick back. And yeah. Nail you too. Dude, that's a heavy piece of wood. <laughs> that is. You hear that? It's coming down? Yeah. Very solid. Yeah, that is not a small piece of wood. Which tells me there's no way we can drag it back. It's too heavy. Yeah, it's got to be sectioned down. Yep. I don't know if I want to pull that out. Right about here? Yep. Hey, it's my turn for the camera. <laughs> Thought I wasn't keeping tabs, huh? That's right. I was just chilling and enjoying it. Beauty of good woods tools like these is you create your own fuel wherever you find it. When you're tool limited, um, don't have a saw, don't have a big knife, just going to go with a small blade. You're walking around looking for targets of opportunity. <clears throat> And they're out there, just gotta find them. You're calorie limited, time limited, like we are here at 11.30 p.m. at night. Yeah. At about 9,500 foot elevation. You generally don't have the time. All right, hang on, I wanna give you a push on this. And out, there we go. Yeah, that probably ought to go. All right, you wanna give that a, careful that doesn't snap back to your crockett. Hold on, let me think about this. That's gonna come out and go right where my foot is. So, let me restage. Take your blade out, Crockett, and let's push it. Both you and I push it that way. But come to the other side of it. Let's push it this way, okay? Gotcha. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, jeez, it's caught up there, isn't it? Yeah, it's caught pretty good. All right, I gotta put the camera away. We're cutting a push stick for that big old log so we can push it out of the way without getting damaged. Use that what were you too. saying about this size? Well, that's something you could probably notch out. Yeah, agreed. You could work on that. That's about the size we'd attack with that small yeah. blade. Yeah. All right. I'm going to have to help crock it so I can't film it. We're going to put that push stick, push that out of the way because if that comes down on top of us, oh, you we're injured. Okay, we go. You narrate it. Let me get in focus. Okay, we got it down. So we used that big push stick, put it on that, gave it a one, two, three. Second time it went. So that worked pretty good. Kept, kept us well out of the fall line. But it worked. Dude, this is a dense piece of wood. That it's is. Heavy. That is. Hey, I'm back on the saw again. <laughs> Back on the chain again. All right, dude. Um, I'm gonna mark this with a beacon of the TK15. Okay. And then, uh, actually, it doesn't have a beacon; it has a strobe. So we can come right back, and we'll haul these two pieces back. Okay. Does that sound good? Yep, sounds good. You know what, we can take our push stick too. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. So there's the stool. What we talked about is just digging a little hole there to give a little more sta stability. Of course, you don't wanna be sitting on the snow, your butt is just wet. So I got this doo-doo shovel with me. Actually, it's probably the better tool for the task yeah. than a big old bladed shovel. Up here. See? 
thinking no, no uh, accelerant to help start it. Well, what do you think? I get that fire started in two seconds with a tender I bring up. However, let's try it without it. And it's probably going to suck. Moisture setting in the air as night goes on. Yeah. We go into morning so it's not dry out anymore. Relative humidity is climbing. It's doable. Everything's doable with patience and time and calories. Yeah. I think a lot of guys, you know, their camping experiences in, uh, you know, temperate conditions, uh -huh. lower elevations, sunny, spring, it's, summer conditions. Yeah. So I think a few viewers arrive on the video thinking this is like their situation. It's a little bit harder to start a fire. I say, you know, I picked up some of the squirrel shavings. You know, we put down a piece of your plank on there. Yeah. See if you can fire them off with flint. I think it's going to be a long shot myself. Just give it a shot and see what happens. Yeah, I'll do it. I got a, a blaster with me. Flint and steel blaster that does pretty good from Survival Technologies, I think. You going to do a fuzz stick? Uh, you know, I think I'm just going to get some shavings off this. And, okay. And, uh, Maybe use some of that squirrel stuff too. Alright. Oh, I like this. That's good review footage right there. There we go. We'll just kind of take this. Oh, that's all you're doing? Plus? <laughs> just when I was getting excited. <laughs> that is the more of bushcraft in the hands of Crockett 20. We'll see what happens. Here. Some shades. I like it. You know what you ought to use is this plank over here, dude. Look at this. That plank we got is bone dry in the middle of it. Oh, nice. That's what I would split. We'll pretend we found it at a nearby lumber mill. No, I'm saying I would split off of that. Oh, get my shavings off yeah, of this. Yeah, I would oh, split I off of that because that is really dry on the interior of that log. I got gotcha. you. Kind of cheating though, kind of, huh? Yeah, you know what? Let's stick with it. Just for method? a fun exercise. Okay. Just for the fun of it. Let's see what happens. We've got other candidates over here as well. I don't go too deep and put a hole in my ass. <laughs> Badge of honor. Let's check the time. Can you believe it's summer? Dude, we're in early summer right now. We might as well be in February. Maybe March. This is more like March conditions on a really nice March day. See, there's too much moisture in them now. Yeah. Not that they're that ignitable anyhow. What we're trying to do is give a test fire of the squirrel chips. This thing's putting out some serious sparkage. I don't know, dude. Those aren't kicking off. Not the way I want them to. It's not the fault of the igniter either. That thing's working great. Uh, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna see if we can do some shavings, really thin shavings. Let's see if they'll ignite. I'm gonna use this as a test case. I know you were doing the same thing, weren't you? Yeah. But I'm gonna do really thin. See, even that's too thick. That's about the size right there. Those little curly cues. I still don't know if that those would take a, you know, off a of flint if those would ignite. All we got to do is ignite a couple though. It 
same concept as a fuzz stick, I guess. Mm -hmm. This little mower is doing a good job. Yeah, they're nice little blades to get in there and do that I lost my little detail thing. work. Imagine doing this in the rain. Oof. Pouring rain. There's no way with that stuff. That'd be no quiet, way. Unless you can get under a, a pine big enough to shelter you. But what works against you is the high relative humidity. Oh yeah. It yeah. makes even the stuff you it, like this stuff. I just shaved it. Immediately it starts soaking in the moisture of the air. That's where to have that uh, some type of accelerant to help you start. Yeah. I don't know if that. Bug spray I got worked. You got anything else? Oh, you know we could use WD-40. <laughs> oh, yeah. I could spray it as soon as you spark it. <laughs> I'm dead serious, dude. Is that any different than using something else? Yeah, it's not. What do you think about that? That looks pretty good. Yeah. If these don't catch, I'm going to go to plan B. Build a little nest of these shavings. I wish I had like a maybe a baseball size of them, but I'm not going to spend all that time. Mm -hmm. Just paper thin shavings, super dry. You want to try that? You think? Yeah. All right. We got this pile here. Do you have more on the wings?